What's up, Insiders? We are back with another exciting edition. I've been on vacation for two weeks, and the one thing I missed the most was, of course, the newsflash. Let's get into those updates. Now, first up, we have a channel guidelines experiment. This is where we're experimenting with a small number of creators, giving them the ability to define up to three channel guidelines for comments. These are a specific set of rules that everyone has to read and accept before they post a comment to your channel that help outline the kinds of conversations you want to see on that channel. Now, if you're part of the experiment, you can check it out by going to YouTube Studio, to the settings, and then clicking on Community. Next up, let's talk about YouTube Studio, mobile, and potentially hurtful comments. Now, last April, we introduced a feature that was intended to help creators find comments most important to them while preventing creators from seeing comments that were potentially hurtful. We did this by introducing a feature which placed those comments that were more hurtful than others in a section within the Held for Review tab in YouTube Studio. Now, the good news is by the end of this month, what we're gonna see is that live within YouTube Studio Mobile as well. Now, as a reminder, you can always view these comments if you'd like. You can do so by selecting See Hidden Comments at the bottom of that Held for Review tab in YouTube Studio, soon to be on YouTube Studio Mobile as well. What you'll see if you click on that is a message asking you to confirm that you want to proceed and it'll cite the fact that the language contains potentially hurtful comments. Next up, we have the policy timestamps experiment. Now, in our efforts to make sure that creators have the best chance to understand community guidelines, when to appeal and how to avoid future violations, what we're doing is testing policy emails where we'll link to a specific timestamp in the video where we believe a violation has occurred. Now, these policy emails will include that linked timestamp as well as specific details around the community guidelines violations, as well as helpful Help Center articles that are related to that violation. Two things that you're really gonna to wanna to keep in mind as we're going through this experiment. Number one, it's being tested with a subset of YouTube's policies. So you might not actually see it yet, but we do have plans to expand to more policies, pending feedback and good results. Another thing I want you to keep in mind is this is in no way related to the yellow icon. I know timestamps has been a consistent ask from the community as it relates to the advertiser-friendly content guidelines, but we want to be very clear that this relates solely to community guidelines for now. Next up, we have the creator mention launch card. Now, currently, if you click on an app mention in a video description, you navigate away from the video that's being watched and onto the channel that's been app mentioned in that video description. To resolve some of those concerns around navigating away from a video that's currently being watched, what will happen from next week going forward is once you click on that app mention in a video description, you'll be presented with a card which will allow you to navigate through a channel while the video is still being played and not losing your location within the app. This will launch on iOS and Android from next week. As ever, let us know what you think in the comments below. Now, let's talk about some neat additions to typical performance in YouTube analytics on mobile. Now, previously, the Studio Dashboard Channel Analytics card showed metrics and performance comparison icons based on period over period change over the last 28 days. Now, in 2020, YouTube Analytics improved these performance comparisons by introducing the concept of typical performance, which only shows up or down arrows if the change is significant. Well, we've now aligned the typical performance indicators across YouTube Analytics and Studio Dashboard. Additional channel level indicators like revenue that we already have available on the web are coming to mobile. And finally, let's touch on the advertiser-friendly content guidelines. As you know, if you are a loyal follower of this channel, we have been conducting a series around the advertiser-friendly content guidelines, i.e. the policies that dictate whether a video gets a green icon or a yellow icon. What we're doing on Thursday is addressing drugs and tobacco, that guideline that you can find on the advertiser-friendly content guidelines, which we will link in the description below. And what I'm asking this community to do is shower the comments underneath this video with as many questions or observations about things you feel are unclear. And on Thursday, I will go through as many of those as I can 
while providing some insights that we're seeing around violations relative to that policy. Now, that's about it from me, from the creators of YouTube to YouTube creators. I'll see you Thursday.